الناس that many from the people do not know or do not know them right many from the people do know them not يعني كثير يعلمهن it also means that many from the people know it if many don't know it that means also that many knows it right والثاني من المعنى فلو كان النصوص مشتبهة على جميع الناس he said the second added دليل that not everybody will have a doubtful matter in a situation or a situation will not be a doubtful matter for everybody the second دليل is in regard to the meaning of the issue he say if there is a text if there is a text that is mushtabiha ala jami'in nas if there is a text that has that is doubtful for everybody lam yakun al quran the quran will not be bayanan will not be barakallahu fikum a source of clarification the quran will not be a source of clarification wal yabqa shay min ash-shari'ati majhulan so therefore a portion of the sharia will be unknown if all the texts if there is an issue that is yani doubtful for everybody that means that there is something about the sharia that will be majhul ignored meaning unknown not ignored but unknown and this is not possible this is not possible for the sharia to have something that is ignored by everybody right and he say that this issue <coughs> it has been protected from and it has also been yani made impossible that issue for something in the sharia to be to be majhul unknown to everybody all the muslims this is something that the sharia has been protected and this is something that is not possible the second faida the second benefit in this hadith is the statement of the shaykh hafizahullah rahimahullah when he mentioned he say al thalith min fawaid al hadith he say hikmatullah azza wa jalla fi dhikri al mushtabihat hatta yatabayyana man kana harisan ala talab al ilm wa man laysa bi haris what is in this hadith from the benefit of it is also is the wisdom for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about doubtful matters in this sharia or in this religion so for those who are harith haris meaning they are very diligent they are zealous about knowledge and those who are not zealous about knowledge right to make the difference between those who are zealous about knowledge those who have a great amount of zeal to learn the knowledge and those who are not yani who are very, who are not zealous meaning they don't have no drive for learning the deen to yep the shaykh hafiz rahimahullah he mentioned no, the the fourth the fourth faida the fourth benefit in this hadith annahu la yumkin an yakunu fi shari'ah ما لا يعلمه الناس كلهم he say also in the benefit that we derive from this hadith is that there is nothing it is not possible that there is one thing in the sharia that everybody ignore that everybody is ignorant about or everybody it is a doubtful matter for everybody there is nothing in the sharia that is doubtful for everybody he say and that could be taken from the statement of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he say la ya'lamuhunna 
كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ That many from the people know it not. That means that others have knowledge of it. Number five from the fawa'id of this hadith, and we're still reading from the Arba'in al-Nawawi by Shaykh Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala. Khamisan, number five, is al-hath ala ittiqa al-shubuhat. That in this hadith, it is given a, a great amount of encouragement to avoid their doubtful matters. In this hadith, it is given, is given a great amount of encouragement in being cautious in avoiding the doubtful matters. لكن هذا مشروط بما إذا قام الدليل على ال and this is in condition that it is established by a dalil that something is a doubtful matter. To avoid it. If there is established that of a dalil that there is this is a this is a doubtful matter. And we barakallah when we were reading the statement of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, he mentioned few things. That will make us know that this matter is a matter of doubtful matter. One of them, anybody remember? One of them. Excuse my feet. One of them, now. He said that may, it's, it could be an issue that the scholars didn't give a ruling on, that they, they have not concluded a ruling on the issue. Or you want a specific case? No, in the same line. Just arrange it a little bit. If there is a disagreement or not disagreement, if there is two statements or many statements that is being said, and everybody is presenting a dalil that's from the same dalil they are presenting the same issue being halal or haram. So this is an indication that this matter is a matter that is doubtful. Another thing that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim mentioned was also if there is an issue that the scholars they have stopped and to do a research in it then that's an indication that it is a doubtful matter. Right? Another one, if there is no precise text coming to rule about this being halal or haram, then also this is an indication of the matter being doubtful. So these are the, the issue that is that the, the Shaykh Rahimahullah mentioned. So if it is not, if there is no proof to show that this is a doubtful matter, then the person is highly recommended and greatly encouraged to, to avoid it. This was number five. And he mentioned, أَمَّا إِذَا لَمْ يَقُمْ الدَّلِيلِ عَلَى وُجُودُ عَلَى وُجُودِ الشُبْهَ كَانَ ذَلِكَ وَسَاوِسًا He said, but now if there is no proof if there is no proof to indicate that this is a matter of a doubtful matter, now it become a yani some type of thoughts that are being intricate in the mind of the person. What and a person wanting to dig deeper in a matter. Now there is no doubt in this issue. Why you want to keep digging? It's already clear. Whether it is halal or it is haram, it is clear. Why you want to keep digging if there is no point to show that this is doubtful? This is a ta'amuk. Like the person want to be stubborn. You want to keep digging. It's just like um, people, for everything they pick up, they want to read the, any, the, the ingredients to the detail point. Now if you want to keep doing that in your life, you ain't going to eat nothing. Because even now the water they have some type of 
ingredients on it. A rest, whatever you call it, recipe, or not the recipe, but you know, the label. On the label, you have the ingredients that they label in, in, in the thing. So he mentioned that this is what is called waswasan, uh, wasawas, or ta'amukan, and it is, and it's stubbornness and the likes of that. Lakin idha wajada ma yujibu al ishtibah fa inna al insan ma'murun bil wara wa tark al mushtabiha. He said, but if it is known of something that show that this is a matter that has a doubt, that ambiguity in it, now the person is being commended to observe what is called cautiousness. The person is being ma'murun bil wara. He is being now commended to exercise caution, cautiousness and to abandon what tark and to abandon that which is doubtful. He say, مثال ذلك any the Shah Hafidh rahimahullah gave us a, 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 a example. He say, ما ثبت في صحيح البخاري عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن رسول الله صلى أن قوما أتوا إلى رسول إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقالوا يا رسول الله إن قوما يأتوننا باللحم لا ندري أذكروا اسم الله عليه أم لا فقال سموا أنتم وكلوا فقالت وكانوا حديث عهد بكفر إمام بخاري رحمه الله تبارك وتعالى as, as he mentioned in a in the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha she said that a people came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallama and they say ya rasulallah or yo o messenger of Allah inna qawman ya'tunana a people came to us bil lahm meaning they offer some meat a people came to us and offer some meat La nadiri, and we do not know whether or not they have mentioned the name of Allah in that animal or in that slaughtering, in that sacrifice. Whether or not they have mentioned the name of Allah or not. A people came to us and offered us some meat. Now we don't know whether or not they mentioned the name of Allah in during the process of the of the dhabh. So in other words, they want to ask the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do they do with that meat? The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said to them, Sammu antum wa kulu. As far as for you, as it concerns you, say Bismillah and eat. Now Aisha radiallahu anha is telling us who was those people that gave the other companion the meat. He, she say, وَكَانُوا hadith عَهْدِ بِكُفْرِ They were newly reverted or converted to Islam. They were newly, they just newly, freshly accepted Islam. So in other words, they might not know what is the correct, the correct way of slaughtering. Now this is what they were thinking that okay these are people that just accepted Islam yesterday. They are new to Islam. They just gave us some meat. So what do we do? The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say antum sammu antum wa kulu eat. As for you, say bismillah and eat. So what do we what what here what what is it in this in this in this in this hadith of Aisha? <coughs> Is that there is no proof to show that it is doubtful. No, not even haram, doubtful. There is nothing that is present to show it is doubtful. So that's why he mentioned earlier, as long as there is no, nothing showing that this is a doubtful matter. So if there is an indication that it is doubtful, then what is the person being Commended is what? 
Awara.